Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of HVAC R&D with Ryan and Dennis. Um, if, you've not been, if you've not been following along, um, welcome. We appreciate it. We're very excited to spread word of HVAC and our shenanigans to the whole world. HVAC knowledge. That's right. Um, so I'm riding. I'm Dennis. And we are HVAC R&D. Uh, we, we started a podcast because, like a lot of you guys, we really wanted something that was different, but something that, you know we could listen to in between service calls, in between you know meetings, different things. Um, kind of quick about us, if you've not listened to our bio earlier or before in a previous episode, um, we both now work for the distribution side, but I grew up in a heating and air business, um, worked my way all through college, and eventually went into the distribution side. And Dennis, I'll let him kind of briefly give you kind of his quick, you know, rise to distributor fame. Oh, distributor fame, like that. Yep. So I, uh, I, I went to school. Uh, came out of the construction industry. I went to school, uh, trying to find a little, little, a little better trade. Um, went to school, got my two year deal, you know, got, went, went and got on with the company. I was his first guy. He was a small guy trying to get started and kind of threw me in a van and, uh, kind of lit my hair on fire and took off running <clears throat> as we do in the summertime. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, coming out of the field, um, started to learn a lot of bad, a lot of bad habits. So, you know, been there, done it, done it the wrong way. Figured I need to start learning the right way. So, you know, like everybody does, start YouTube and start learning and start reading. And uh, kind of got burnt out in the field a little bit. Started looking around, kind of landed a tech support and training job which i enjoy uh working for a distributor now but um just trying to spread the word try to help some guys out that that you know i've been in their situation so that's kind of why we started this um so it's going to be you know a little bit about hvac and a, a lot about a whole lot of other crap <laughs> i think some of it too is you know we've listened to other he didn't in our podcast. We listen to other business podcasts. Um, but one thing you don't really hear on the heating and air side from perspective is people that not only have been in the field, but have been now we're on the distribution side because there's a lot of, there's a lot of differences between, you know, understanding how those two businesses work. Um, right. You know, I know what it's like, you know, purchasing from different distributors, seeing how I was treated by different distributors. And a lot of that has, you know, changed, you know, my perspective on how I approach different things with contractors now is primarily I'm focused on sales and business development. But Dennis on the tech side, he also has a lot of influence on, you know, our contractors and helping educate them on how different things run in the field and he's really an extension of the sales force because we can combine two different types of knowledge to help the contractor build a better business on both sides right yeah i mean i remember being in the field um you know everybody hates to call that tech support guy because you know you don't you, you're not going to have shit together he's going to ask you 100 questions and you're not ready um you maybe just want to bounce something off of him, but I always felt like now that I'm on this side, I could, you know, I felt like we're all selling something. I mean, that's what we do, you know? Um, so there is a connection there, um, whether it's selling to a homeowner or, you know, like us selling to a contractor, there's a connection there. And, uh, maybe we can, you know, it kind of leads us to this, this podcast here. We're going to try to dive into, what's going on there with with uh you know 
how we buy stuff and how we sell it and you buy it and kind of the truth about about pricing all the way around and i think a lot of that too is um i really wanted to let you kind of open with some questions directed at me dennis because i wanted you to kind of think back to questions you had when you were in the field as to you know you know what really goes into okay well i'm going somewhere to buy a motor you know what really goes into all these different things for different distributors um but also you know every contractor is also always concerned with am i getting a great price am i getting the best price am i getting the best price and there's yeah i mean it's so that's that's the other thing i've kind of been on both sides to where you know when i uh the first company i started with i was his first guy and it was like he was like, Hey, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to bring you on, but I mean, we, we, we got to grow this thing together. So then all of a sudden I'm, I'm owner mindset, you know, I'm, I'm tech slash, Hey, we get this thing built up. Um, we could definitely, definitely do something with it. So now you walk in that, you know, you walk in a supply house with a different mindset. So, um, we'll, we'll try to touch on that in both ways here. So, um, of course, as a technician, you walk into a supply house, you, you got a, you got a PO, you get a motor, you could care less what that thing costs. Um, you know, I know flat, flat rate pricing's going around, you know, that's becoming a big thing. You know, you're charging, you know, you're charging wherever, you are, wherever you're at in the country, you're charging whatever to put a motor in, no matter what. But, uh, you know. I was going to say, so, so tell us a little bit about as a distributor, let's, I mean, motor's a good example. We'll just start with that as far as the process of finding a rep, buying a motor, you know, the margins, you know, I, I know it's a little different, different parts of the country, but, um, I mean, take us through that a little bit. And it's, it, it gets to be a real battle because there's, there's some people that no matter what, they just want the cheapest thing they can get that fulfills a need. And right. so there's, and there's always going to be, there's always going to be that one distributor that no matter what, they just are, they're the cheapest one out there and that's fine. But more than likely, you know, you're only going there because of price. There's really probably nothing else. A lot of times it's keeping you there. It's, it may not be convenience or it may be, but in most cases you're going because you can buy this motor for $3 less than it is somewhere else. And you think that's the best deal you can get. Right. Um, but when you really look at, even if you look at flat rate, two or $3 really doesn't make a difference. Um, buy it from the guy that takes care of you. Buy it from the guy that, you know, calls you, checks in on you. Helps you with what you need. He's fairly priced, but it's where you get your service. Um, right. And that's that's not even meant to be a sales pitch for for salespeople. But, you know, on my side of it, growing up in a family business in a very, very rural area, you know, we, we might have to go an hour to get to, you know, the cluster of supply houses that you might see in a, in a large city. Um, so... You know, for us, you know, there was no convenience if we had to go and get it. Um, you know, a dollar here or a dollar there when you're driving an hour out of your way didn't really matter at that point. So it, it started to come down to, you know, it really did start to come down more to service because, you know, if you're you're paying a fair price, then, you know, you're selling it at a fair price and you're, you're all making money. If you're just yeah, trying I mean, to go that's... out and... You, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta price your jobs out accordingly. I mean, um, I remember my old boss, you know, he's, it, it's almost like the bigger you get, the more it matters and it's about backwards. I mean, if you ask me, <laughs> um, when we first got started, we just wanted to hook up with a distributor. Um, we hooked up, we hooked up with a Goodman line. That was just where he opened up his first account. Uh, 
I think he had started the company he left before he started his own thing was Linux, but um, it didn't matter. He just finds somewhere to start. Of course, we get we're, we're going to have some episodes on that too. About um, I feel like the new generation doesn't want to find a distributor, create a relationship where you both can grow together. I mean, I think that's a big issue today. Um, we see a lot of fly by nights, you know, guys come in there and buy a couple things and they go down to the next, you know, they're buying a system from, you know, whatever the homeowner thinks they want. Um, in the end, you don't need to be selling a brand. You need to, you need to create your own brand. And when, I think and when you important. find, yeah. And when you find the, when you find that right fit, you know, it all works. Um, brand is important, but brand's not the be all end all. Right. You know, I mean, I have brands that, that I'm partial to as do you, um, you know, I've, I've had brands of equipment. I've been around the entire time I've, you know, I've been in this business and it's, it's always been one that's been reliable and fairly priced, but it's, you know, you've also got to understand when you look at what your true truth about pricing is, what is your market? I mean, are you, are you a new construction guy? Are you service retrofit? Are you commercial? Are you primarily residential? What's, what's your true market? Because that also has to come into play when you look at, you know, where you start eventually building those relationships. You want to make sure that, you know, you're keeping your best relationships with the people that are built to support the business you want to have. And that's yeah, hard I mean, to see in the beginning. Right. No, it is. I mean, we, like I said, when, when we were, when we got started small, um, long as they had them, long as they had the equipment, get us loaded up. We didn't sit in the supply house for two hours. Um, you know, of course you're going to have the guys are going to go in there and bullshit the whole time, uh, bebop around cause they don't want to get started. You know, that's your hourly guys. But you know, you got to find a distributor that can, you can partner up with. Um, it doesn't matter who it is as long as they help. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, the elephant in the room is when, when you get to, when you get to where you're, you're trying to save 50 to a hundred bucks on a furnace or maybe even a whole system and you're bouncing around from distributor, to distributor, trying to find that. That's a problem. If, if you need to do that to make a profit, you are not selling the job properly. No. And at that point you are, you've become a slave to price. And if you're a slave to price, you won't ever be profitable. Um, right. You have to know what you need to make. You also have to know what your market will bear. Um, pricing for one market, even in one state, may be completely different for another market two hours away. Um, oh, yeah. Equipment, when you look at pricing for equipment, you know, every single state almost has a different base cost from every single manufacturer because every state is a completely different market. Oh yeah. You know, and if you look at how distribution is broken up, you know, just based on national mandates, you know, we're already split into multiple regions based on what you can and can buy in that said region. So then it just kind of shrinks from there. So, so coming from the contractor side, I'll never forget when our sales rep, um, when we switched from Goodman to a different distributor, had about a seven year relationship with this guy. Um, he pulled up to the shop as he normally did. He, you know, come by and saw us, you know, biscuits, uh, breakfast, whatever, lunch shows up in a brand new truck. I'll never forget. My boss was like, yep. We're going to have to start looking for some lower pricing because, you know, he sees our salesman pull up in a new truck. Um, they got to be taking us to the cleaners. We got to find, you know, of course, at that point we were buying quite a bit of, you know, quite a bit of equipment. Um, but of course, still taking care of us, still looking out. 
you know, opening up the branch on a Sunday to get, you know, who knows what, cause we got to change out or something went wrong. Um, it, I just feel like some of these guys are real quick to forget about that. Um, answering, answering your phone calls, you know, all hours of the night. Cause you gotta, you know, you gotta get something ready for the next day. Um, but, uh, yeah, so you, you, I don't know if you want to touch on that a little bit. <laughs> I mean, it, well, uh, one of the funny things, you know, you talk about the new truck. Um, when I went to work for a, a previous distributor at one point, you know, it was in our contract that we had to drive a vehicle that wasn't older than a certain year because they just, they wanted to put forward a, you know, a fresh prof- face of professionalism. You know, they wanted right. you to look clean cut. They wanted you to represent the company well. Um, you know, if it's, you know, 2015, they didn't want you pulling up in a 1992 Honda that you've had since high school. And, <laughs> you know, at that point, they're like, ooh, you know, is this guy legit? But then, you know, you hate to see on the other side, you know, it can be judged. Is he just selling vacuum cleaners? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is this guy? Is he guy selling say? Kirby? Herby Kirby's? What? <laughs> Hey, I once had a boss that did that mm-hmm. all through college. What was what was that vacuum? They were like ten thousand dollars <laughs> or some shit. You had to. I'm trying to remember. It, they were like belt driven. Ah, oh, what was that? Yeah, I mean vacuum salesman. I mean, you know, door to door. I mean, that, you know, those are the days when, um, I guess in the nineties, of course, I'm not, I wasn't in the, I wasn't in the field then, but I mean, the sales guys were, you know, riding around suit and tie, you know what I mean? Yep. Decked out. If you pull up to a job site now to meet a contractor and you got a suit and tie on, He's going to go to another distributor because you're, you've got to be crushing it. Yep. <laughs> you've got to be getting over on him. Yep. And in most cases, that's, it's not really the case. Um, you know, it's just. That's the mindset now yep. though. It's, yep. Oh, it is. Um, and I think, I think the ease of communication, internet, everything that's come about in the last really 20 to 25 years as we've come through this trade now it's it's completely changed that that pricing dynamic too because now as as soon as you can get a price from your distributor you can get online and google it and you know then then somebody's beating up somebody over a price yep um but what a lot of people don't think about is okay well i'm getting i'm getting this online and it's cheaper well, in a lot of cases, you know, you look at your lead times. Yes, sometimes you can get it in a few days, but a lot of times you're looking three to four days. And the reason you're looking three to four days is that online company actually isn't stocking it. They're just drop shipping it from whatever manufacturer may be, you know, building it. Right. So they're not, they have no money in it for housing it, unloading it, stocking it on a shelf, paying the guy that's stocking it on a shelf you know, paying him to pull it and pack it and ship it back out. There's no holding cost. So there's a lot of reasons why, yeah, you might be able to find it three or $4 cheaper online. But in most cases, you know, that's, that's not to say that every single place you could buy online doesn't have a brick and mortar warehouse. It's not saying that. Right. But there's a difference in, there's a difference in cost to every situation when you go from, just straight drop ship to brick and mortar. Got to pay people. It's just, it's 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 a whole different thing. They got to operate. I mean, um, no, I'll never forget it, especially in Atlanta. That's where I started, did my service, um, Charlotte area now, but, um, I don't know. We went to, went through a few years there where, uh, you, pull up to a call and it was a quote like it was you know you you look at your tablet you're like oh sweet i'm going to a quote because we had um 
I mean, we were all selling text, so we didn't have a salesman at that time. Pull up, you got a quote, you go in there, and the guy's like, yeah, I just, uh, I just purchased this new system, and I need y'all, you guys to put it in. I'm like, what? I'm like, oh, yeah, it's out there on the, it's in the driveway. It's on a pallet. You go out there, and he's got an air handler. He's got an outdoor unit. He's got a line set. And there you go. Yeah. Ready to go. Um, he don't know what heat kit he's got. He don't know what size it is. He don't know what plenums. He, nothing. Nope. They and just they I, got on some. So you know. Oh yeah, I mean you can go online and get everything, but yeah. Uh, what does that come with? You know. First of all, we we wouldn't put if you find somebody to put that in. Besides your brother in law, that's a red flag. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I, we, we wouldn't put it in, but I, I come across that a lot, especially mini splits. That was a big one, too. But, uh, you know, you go out, of course, this is another episode, but you go out there and there's a uh, air handler, heat pump, no heat kit, line set. And, you, and I'm like, all right, so let me just, you know, Maybe maybe he got lucky, he ordered all the right stuff. We could charge him something, put it in. I go into the house. He's got a furnace. Um, you know, he's got a furnace coal and an AC. Like he didn't even order the right. You know, he didn't order the right nothing. So, nope. Um, yeah, you, I, I started seeing that a lot. Um, of course, that's on the homeowner side, but well, and you know being on distribution now too you know uh you know there's plenty of days where we'll have a homeowner walk in or a a business owner that's you know he's holding a capacitor in his hand and he looks at you and says hey i need one of these yeah (laughs) and you can say excuse me what is it that you need i need one of these i said you need a capacitor yeah one of these yeah okay um you know sir you know do i ask you have you do you have an account here no, okay. I said, do you have a, you know, heat and air license from the state that you're operating in? Do you have an EPA card? You know, nothing. But, you know, they want to come buy the part because they think if they buy the part, it's going to be cheaper for them to get some guy to put it in. Right. And and I'll tell you first thing, you know, for distributor I work for, you know, well, you and I work for, we're not going to sell to an unlicensed contractor anyway, because why would we do that? You know, then we're just, you know, then we're just hurting our own people, and we're certainly not going to sell to a homeowner or a business owner that could go blow his business up or do something even crazier because he doesn't know right. what he's doing. Um, yeah, I mean, we got to, it, it's it's the, it's the last good trade. I mean, it, you know, it's a it's a highly it's a skilled trade, and we got to you got to try to save the save the trade. I say, I mean, well, and when you say, you know, save the trade, once again, we can pull that back to pricing too. Um, yep. You shouldn't be the lowest guy in the room all the time. The knowledge that you have and the skills you have in this trade, the time you spent to get a license or get an, you know, get your EPA card on your way to getting a license, the time you spent as an apprentice all the way up to possibly even your own business owner. You know, you worked for that experience. You learned that experience. Well, you spent a lot of money on that. You spent a lot of money on that. Don't give it away for free. You know. No, I mean, I if if you go if you go to these, you know, I went to quotes as a tech. You know, we go to quotes, and there and I'd be in line, and there'd be three vans in front of me. Not this, like I said, this is in Atlanta, so there'd be three vans in front of me, three different companies. And the homeowner would come out and kind of wave me in like I'm the next guy on the chopping block, you know. And you go in there, well, you know, you spend your, I mean, you know, you walk around, you kind of, you know, give it a once over. Of course, I always, you know, hey, what's wrong with it? Because I, I was a tech as well, you know. I don't know how many times I went to a call and a capacitor was bad or something simple. And say, so, hey, you know, I can, I mean, I can fix this and give you a quote. And uh, get you running through the weekend, let you think it over. A lot of times, that was a hook, line, and sinker right there for sure. 
um, you know, the three vans in front of me were straight salesmen. So a little tidbit there. I mean, I always walk in there with a tool bag. You never know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I go in there and give a price. I mean, you charge them what I charge them what we charge. You know, they, some homeowners want to lay it out there and say, Hey, this guy, you know, he was going to put it in for this. And I'm like, well, I don't, you know, this is what we put it in. You got, you got to stick, you got to stick to your guns. You have to. Um, if you truly believe you do a good install and it's worth this and you pay your guys good money to put it in and, and you can offer them a service contract, um, you know, you're not too small to where you can't come back and fix it or you come on a Saturday. I mean, that that's worth money. You, you can't just give that away. Um, there's always going to be somebody cheaper. You cannot, you can't go in there like that. Um, and as you grow, guess what? You got to get, you got to, you got to go up. It's just simple, simple business. You got to go up. You can't be, you can't be a, you know, two, $3 million company and beat the guy, beat Chuck in a truck. No. You can't. You can't be a million dollar company and beat Chuck in a truck because no. Chuck in a truck is, you know, working for what he thinks is three hundred dollars in beer money on Friday. That's right. I mean I like beer too, but Yeah. We <laughs> don't we all <laughs> maybe. But yeah, I mean you gotta you gotta start to create your own brand. And of course, you know, I talk to contractors every day. You know, some of them come in my office like, "Hey, what? You know, what am I doing wrong? I can't, I can't hire this guy. I hired him. I can't, I can't get it going. I can't get it growing." Um, you got guys that want to grow, and you got guys that don't. Um, trust me, I meet, I meet guys that are, you know, three and four man operation, and they're just riding at that size. They make a good living. They, you know, take a couple vacations a year and. But you still you got to find that you got to find what you need to charge to make a profit. Um, I don't. I mean, I we wasn't, but uh, I don't know if there's any. You know, it's not it's not charity. I mean, we're all out there trying to make a living, um, and that's the same with the distributor. Yep. You know, and there's you know there's there's times where you just keep getting beat down and beat down and beat down. But there comes a point. It's like, guys, that's it. That's all there, all there is in it. I got to make a living too. Um, right. And it's, it's not wrong for your distributor partner to want to make a living too. Um, I, I will tell you having worked on the contractor side and, and then having come to the distributor side and being involved in the sales aspects and some of the other things. Um, Distributors get looked at like they make more profits than anybody, but but honestly, distributors are really who get beat up the most because we're the middle guy between manufacturer and the contractor. Um, right. So there. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that firsthand when I crossed the line for sure. Um, and there's you know there's always going to be. There's always going to be a product that one distributor buys better than the other one. Just, it's the name of the game. Um, one guy might be able to buy float switches, you know, a dime cheaper than the other guy. And that's what makes the difference if you're just looking at price. Um, what you really got to do is you, you look at, you know, if you were to order this from this guy and the exact same thing from this guy, are you getting a fair price on, you know, out the door from both? Sure, great. Um, everything in some some cases, you know, is a is a negotiation. You know, if you've never dealt with a distributor before, and you walk in there and you say, "Hey, we you know what's your price on a box of fourteen inch flex?" If they don't, you know, if if they've not dealt with you, you're you know a first time guy walking in there. In most cases, the number they tell you is probably going to be high. Right. Well, that's what I was going to say. Because so they, they don't they don't know your business. They don't know, you know, what you're looking at. Um, honestly, 
as a contractor, if you ask the distributor that, or if a contractor were to ask me that, the first question I'm going to ask is, okay, you know, you and I haven't done business before. So, you know, where do you need to be? Let me see what I can do. Well, I was, so I was going to ask you that. So as a contractor and this, you know, once you get to the size, this is when it starts kind of coming up. But um, I'm a contractor. I approach you and I say, hey, you know, I've bought, I've bought, uh, you know, I've did four or five change outs this year. Um, I noticed that big company coming in here. Uh, I, you know, I've seen their ticket. I mean, why can't I get the same pricing as them? Like, what's up with that? I mean, I'm, I got an account here. I'm, I'm buying a system here and there. I mean, what's the big deal? Yep. And that's, it, it gets to be a difficult situation sometimes because some contractors get offended because they feel like you're treating them like the little guy. It's not, it's not meant to be that way. I mean, I grew up in a company that was the little guy. Um, right. You know, so I've seen it both ways. Um, and a lot of times it, it depends on what you have to do even to get business. Um, well, that's kind of where we get in the truth about pricing. Be, yeah. There's it's, always going to be a different, a little bit different price when it comes to big, big volume. You know, the guy that's buying a million dollars of product from you in most cases isn't going to get the same, you know, is going to have a better price than the guy that's buying 30 grand all year. It's, it's just a difference because you have to have, in most cases, pricing on the back end is all negotiated on a case by case basis with all of your vendor partnerships. Um, well, and I've, I've noticed too on this side, like if you didn't have that because of, you know, from what I've seen, the margins are so small for a distributor. I don't want to say you make it on the small guys, but you almost have to. The, the more the more they buy, the cheaper the price they want. Next thing you know, um, you know, I'll never forget when we we were buying. I don't know, a couple million dollars a year. You know, I I, I talked to the salesman on a regular basis. Said, hey man, um, you know, I always called him because we were we were growing. I'd say, hey man, I sold two systems today. He's like, sweet man, I appreciate that. And you know, I'd call you know couple years go by i said hey man I, I sold another furnace today you know it's winter time it's slow he's like yeah it's cool man i need you to sell like 300 today because <laughs> <laughs> he made like pennies on a dollar and off it, of us it's, it's on a truth. furnace you truth. know what i mean it's like <laughs> he's like man that's awesome but uh you think you could sell four or five more today <laughs> and that's you know you know, my boss kept negotiating the price, kept, hey, man, we're buying a bunch of equipment. You can't get that price down. And and I just remember, like I said, I don't, I don't want to bash him, but, man, as 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 we got better pricing, that that's not so we can go down on price to still beat Chuck in a truck. Yep. We got better pricing, which means we're growing, which means – we should charge more for a change out. I mean, like I said, I went from Georgia to North Carolina. That's a, those markets aren't even, you can't even compare them. No, you can't. And I and, mean, it's four hours away and you can't even compare them. No. And, and like you said, if, if the whole reason you're beating down your distributor is because you want to, you want to be able to beat some guy that's even lower than you, you're, you're going about it the wrong way. Um, you should never be beating them up just so you can make more profit. Now that's not me saying you shouldn't make a profit. That's, but that's me saying you got to think about the service you're getting from them. They have a business too. Distribution's a business too. And if, you know, we have a good working relationship, we're taking care of you. Don't, don't come to me every year and try to take a hundred grand or, you know, not a hundred grand, excuse me not a hundred dollars off a system every single year because at some point it's not there. It's not, yeah, there. It's not there. It just, it just right. isn't there. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, guys will want the lowest bottom dollar price, but then they'll want, you know, 
a rebate on top of it, and this on top of that, and this on top of that, and all those little percentages, you know, if you want a 4% rebate out of something, that 4% is coming straight out of somebody's bottom line. Um, oh, yeah. So, you know, the biggest problem I have seen in the last really four or five years is that every manufacturer's got some kind of canned rebate program, but none of them are sustainable. They're trying to right. make them richer and richer every year because they think it's going to make somebody move from this brand to that brand. But if every single guy spends every single year just looking for the next brand to move to, that doesn't help his business or the distributors. It, no, it's, especially it's, especially in a heat pump market. I get more calls in the on, you know, what's your reversing valve wire? What color do y'all use? It's like, well, you know. Yep. <laughs> start bouncing around i mean you, you got to find a distributor you got to find a brand you like you get comfortable with um of course if that distributor is not working for you you know if 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 you're a training guy and you like training and they ain't got a good training program you know might have to switch you gotta you gotta look at more than just pricing yeah you have to look um, at the whole support staff of what you're getting when you work with that distributor and like we said you know we're going to talk most about. brands put in right are going to be fine anyway yeah um to a point you know i don't want to go on bashing equipment but um i love it in class because I, I got you know 25 guys in there and you know you got to assume that they're all in there with me and, and my brand but um you know some of these guys have worked for different you know different companies and they they got their they got their picks but uh installed properly you you really got to start looking at other things besides you know price and brand you got to see are they going to take care of you are they do they deliver you know do they they put you on the board first thing in the morning um deliver the job i mean all that comes into play really when you're picking yep and, and, you know, the, the more, it's going to say kind of the more you dig into things like, you know, are they delivering the job sites for you every single day? You know, that, that once again, that comes into the truth behind pricing. You know, it, there was a cost to that delivery getting to the job site and back for that distributor too. Um, you know, there's, there's always going to be other things that, you know, we all got to think about. You know, you don't, you don't want to send all of your guys driving around to every single different supply house chasing a dollar. Right. No. Well, when you're small, it don't show up. You know what I mean? Um, or when you get large, it doesn't show up. But uh, you, no, it does, I, feel, it does I, feel, I feel like in the summertime, efficiency, that word just kind of goes out the window. Every year, it just was like in the fall, we get geared up. All right, man. We got it. We got to keep up with this, and we got to keep up with that. And you're gonna monitor this, and then it got 95 degrees, and it was like, no, nope. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope. I mean, you know, one more call, one more call, eight calls, nine calls. Um, why are you still there? Why are you still there? We got this lady. We were supposed to be there yesterday. All the, sh you know, that shit's out the window. And that's, but I mean, that, that's where planning and, and all that starts playing into the pricing game too. If you're not organized and everything is potentially a shit show every single day, that's going to show up in the bottom line real quick. Um, if you don't have a focus plan for your, for your guys and your business. Well, and that's another thing. Like you got, you know, I get guys that come in, sit in my office and go, man, I had to, you know, we, in our market up here, we got it. We got a company that's they're big time, right? They're their commercials, their billboards, everywhere you look. And uh, this guy's got three or four techs, he's got one change out crew. He comes in, sits them all. So he's like, Man, I, you know, I, I came behind that company yesterday, and they were like, you know, I mean, sometimes it's astronomical, they're like three or four thousand dollars higher than me. And they got the job. They beat me out. And I'm like, 
And they were like, how is that even possible? I'm like, well, for one, homeowner, like, you know, homeowners, people like to buy stuff, right? I mean, they want to buy something new, but they, homeowners are, they want to know what comes with it. You know, your price was so low to the point where they didn't think you could take care of them after you got it put in. They're thinking, this company here, I mean, I see them all the time. I mean, they got somebody they can send over here, whether it's Sunday, midnight. You know, are you going to go over there Sunday, midnight, and clean their P-trap out? Get them rolling again? Probably not. <laughs> I mean, um, but we got to have those guys in these towns. These big guys, they're keeping the market up. Yeah. If they If they didn't have those higher prices, you wouldn't have somewhere to go behind and, and be able to beat out some of these guys with, with what truly right. is probably the more fair price. If um, everybody beat everybody out, next thing you know, putting a system in will be like somebody coming up and hooking your, you know, delivering an appliance and hooking the dryer up. Yep. You know, it's going to be like 150 bucks. You buy it online, somebody comes out and puts it in. I mean, we, we got to avoid that. No, none of us want that because as soon as that happens, then what's the point of what's the point of even being in a trade if, if you right. can't if you can't control a bit of your market and be allowed to make a good living? They're always going to need heat and air people. They're always going to need plumbers. They're always going to need carpenters. And you know we've seen heat and air. Yeah, we're always going to need it. We've seen such a move away from the trades in the last 20 years that you know for for more people that especially in pandemic time are looking for a different job or a different path to the future they've got to look at you got to look at trades you know yeah i mean look at look at plum and electrical right like you got youtube now you got google i mean that's that's crushing a lot of trades yeah um but guess what? That guy can can YouTube and Google all day how to put that HVAC system in. But when he comes in the supply house to buy it or get it, you know, get it permitted, it ain't happening. But he can go buy that outlet or that wall switch and, and you know, get his ass lit up trying to put it in. But still, he can get it in, YouTube it, whatever. It, it's the last... It's a dying, you know, it's the last trade. There ain't many left. No, there's not. So what other, you know, what other things did you, did you wonder about when you were, you know, riding around as a service tech and you were looking at these different things from time to time, going distributor to distributor? I mean, were there, were there things that stood out that made you feel like, oh, I should go to this place just because of this? Or... You know, was it as a service tech, were you just making the convenient decision? Yeah, I mean, as a, like I said, there's there's a couple different techs. I mean, you got techs that, you know, I've worked for a company that had 40 techs, and they give you a list of distributors that they have an account with, and they give you a PO, and hell, half the time you don't even know what, what it, you know, what you paid for it you charge this much for to put in an outdoor fan motor and that's what you charge. Is it under warranty? If it's not, whatever, and you go over there and get it. Um, yeah, I mean, it just depends. I mean, if you're, if you're, you're trying to grow with a, you know, with a guy, um, <clears throat> or your owner operator, you know, you, you go in a supply house and you buy a capacitor for seven, you know, $7, you go out there and charge two fifty, three fifty for it. Um, I'm just not that guy to turn around and go, man. You know, why can't I get this for five bucks? I mean, what the hell? I mean, I, this place down the street's got it for five bucks. Yeah. Um, and that, yeah, like I said, that just brings it back. I mean, and, and if you, you start nickel and diamond like that, then you're not in a good place. No, to grow the company. But you'd be amazed how, how many times we actually see that um on this side, you know. You know, I've worked I've worked behind a counter at multiple distributors uh, and you just you see that every time. Um if 
you know, 50 cents different on a capacitor to make or break, you're in trouble. Um, and the other thing you see is, you know, a lot of times, you know, guys are putting a capacitor in and they're charging, you know, 225, 250, whatever they're charging for it. Right. Um, and they think that there's, you know, once again, they start thinking that there's that kind of markup on equipment, like there may be on a part or something else. And it's just, I think that is the, game. I think that's the confusion right there. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not true retail. You know, if you're walking into Walmart and you're buying a t-shirt, you're buying a t-shirt, most likely at true retail markup, which is, you know, 225%. Um, there's nothing like that in wholesale. Nothing. No. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I, mean, I, it, it, I, I, I catch little words here and there, but it's it's usually single digits. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 so it's so low because it's and it's it's because you're getting beat from both sides all the time. Um, it, yeah, I mean, I feel like the the the, and I don't know, but I mean, I feel like the manufacturer ain't they're not crushing it either. It's all volume. You know what I mean? You got to move a lot to make it happen. Well, and I think the other thing, too, is the more and more that they try to beat down pricing on equipment, to be honest, the more and more you're actually going to see callbacks. You're going to see failures. You're going to see things not built the way you want it to be built. I mean, people look back at products that were put in, you know, during the housing boom in the late 90s, early 2000s before, you know, Right, the housing bubble burst. I mean, everything that was getting put in was being built as cheap and as fast as possible. And you know, now, you know, you're looking back and people are changing these systems out left and right. I mean, granted, a lot of them are hitting their age at this point, but you know, some of them didn't make it four or five years because coils were leaking. Everything yeah, they had everything on them replaced. I mean, thing was built as cheap as it could be built just to get it out the door. Um, and you're starting to see, you're starting to see some brands, you know, starting to, oh yeah, to no, pull we're back moving that things. direction. Um, you're seeing even even big national brands are starting to put in, you know, lower priced compressors. They're putting in lower priced components. So it's, yeah, the compressor deal has has popped up. Um. I know when me and you have went and met a contractor, you know, that was thinking about coming aboard with us. Um, first thing he asked was, what kind of compressor? Y'all got scroll compressors? Yeah, <laughs> Copeland scrolls or whatever, you know, because he's already been bit. Take Taking a compressor, you know, warranty compressor back, and they're, they're telling him, you got to pay for it first. And he's, that's fine. And it's like $120. Yeah, if you're paying, that's a red flag. <laughs> if you're paying that's less for a capacitor or not a capacitor, you're paying less for a compressor than you are uh, a blower motor. Something's wrong. Yeah, no, that's not gonna work. If it's not three or four hundred bucks, then and I mean, depending on the tonnage, flag. you're you're talking five and six hundred. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. it, it, it's weird, you know. And you start looking at, you know, well, how does this? How does you know brand X give this? this rebate it's like well you know they've got to find the money to do it somewhere so they're they're going cheaper components because you're going to sling that stuff out there for a year or two yeah you'll get your rebate but you're going to give every bit of it back in labor for callbacks over the next eight years after that right plus um you know that goes back to truth about rebates is in most cases they're just not sustainable because you're never you know, when you're first starting and you're just growing, yeah, you might grow 30% year over year for the first two or three years. But after that, you're not going to grow in most cases. I mean, there are there are those outliers. I've got a contractor now that he has grown exponentially every year for the last three or four years, and it's it's blown my mind. Um, but I mean, so I mean, there are those cases. But in most cases, I mean, it's going to be a never winning battle. And then at some point, another distributor is going to say, well, you know, I'll throw this number at you because they didn't help build that business, but they're willing to give up three or four percent to take it from someone else. That right. Didn't, that didn't necessarily earn it. 
Yeah, I mean, I feel like he, I feel like pairing up with a distributor and growing with them. I feel like those days are slipping away. Um, you know, when we first, like I said, you know, we started with Goodman, but that little supply house we started with, we went in there and, you know, you get to, I mean, those guys, you get to know them. I mean, I'm in there every day picking up equipment or parts and, uh, you know, it's a little family and you come in there and you shoot shit with them and whatever. But, uh, you know, we changed. I mean, I kind of hated it, but, uh, you know, we switched to a different brand. I had a little better rebate, um, a little better training, you know, just a different supply house. Um, it, it, you, I feel like those days are slipping away. I mean, we got to, you got to find a distributor because there's still some out there that'll help you build, build your business. I mean, um, like in your case, you know, I mean, we got, you got either a tech guy or you got a salesman that's been through it. You know, we got these guys that are 25 and 30 years old and they're like, you know, they've been doing service calls and they're just like, man, I'm ready to, I'm ready to get my license and bust out on my own. And they really don't know what the hell's going on. No. And, and a lot of these, those guys, you know, they went to, they went to tech school maybe. Um, but tech school doesn't teach you everything you need to know about even no. service and install, Anything. let alone running a business. Anything. Um, I mean, I don't, yeah. I'm not going to knock tech school, but I mean, I, I mean, I went, I went through two years of it and I'm, I'm sure they're all different, but, um, and, and this was at a time in my life where I, you know, I cared about school <laughs> and I was interested in it and, you know, straight A's learned everything I could and went to my first call and was like, Oh my God, none of it applied. I mean, <laughs> none of it. Of course, that'll be another episode. Dennis's worst service calls. Yes. <laughs> We're pumped for that one in a few weeks. Um, um So yeah, I mean, we, I feel like we we've we've touched on a lot here. Pretty much anybody that's going to get into the business is not going to now. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> they're, or they're not going to involve us. Those guys right. are nuts. Why would I call them? Oh. Yeah, I mean, I, of course, as tech support, you know, I feel like that that side of the industry needs to change. Um. It's going to have to change, actually. Um, these young kids that are, are going, getting thrown into this, um, that mindset of, well, he should know what he's doing, and why is he calling me for that? Um, the, these things aren't, it's, it's not an R22 piston. I mean, that's, that, those days are gone. I mean, these systems are, are pretty in-depth now. Uh, there's a lot changing. There's a lot can go wrong, and uh, you know the, the training is just not there. But if these guys didn't didn't call me with stupid questions, I wouldn't have a job. So <laughs> it's job security. <laughs> so bring on the millennials. <laughs> bring it on. Well, and I think you know. Once again, we talk about that building the relationship, which again, another episode, but right. this generation, like we said, that, that bounce around place to place to place. It's just, it, everything's become so much more fast paced that you've got to just start trying to figure out how you can get people to slow down and level with you again. Right. It's just a throwaway economy. I mean, it's just, you, you can't do that with a distributor. I mean, you got to find somewhere to land. Um, I love having guys call me that I got them saved in my phone. Like, Hey, what's up, man? You know, instead of, you know, you know, 1-800, you know, wait for the guy, you know, somebody to call you back. You don't know where he's at. He's in a different country. Um, you know, there's a relationship. You got to build that. Yep. Um, and you just, you know, you start to learn guys and you got to kind of build it up. 
build some trust. And even if it is a stupid question, I mean, if you got guys calling you to ask stupid questions, then they are comfortable calling you. Yep. You know, and you know, I look at that too. I think, I think that's one thing that, that both sides of this business, we could all be better, better about is, I mean, I, I am so grateful for all the contractors I've dealt with. Um, you know, the whole time I've been in this business, I've got to meet a lot of really interesting people. I've made a lot of oh, cool yeah. friends. I mean, there's, <laughs> you know, there's, there's a lot of reward, you know, in a contractor telling you, thank you for helping him, you know, solve a problem. Um, there's, you know, when the contractor invites you and your wife, who your wife has nothing to do with this business, but I mean, you know, they invite you and your wife to, you know, a Christmas dinner or a party. Um, you know, those things are extremely rewarding because you feel like you've made, you've made an impact, you know, and unfortunately right. you can't always go to everything. Um, but I mean, you, you try to get, you know, as much as you can anytime they ask you to be there because, you know, it's them showing you that you're valued. Um, oh yeah. And that's important. Um, you don't see that as much on the distribution side anymore. It's like we say, it's just, it's becoming that price based transactional business. And that's, that's really where our trade is, is going South at times. Um, you don't want to see oh, that. Yeah. You don't want, you don't want heat and air just to become a commodity. No, no, we gotta, we gotta, like I said, it's a, it's a good trade. Um, it is a pretty wild business, though. <laughs> well, that's and, the beauty uh, of it. It's it's something yeah. different every day in this business. You know, it's a service industry. I mean, it is what it is. It's service. Um, you know, it's not it's not building a deck and coming back the next day and tinkering on it and coming back the next day. It's it's uh the the homeowners are changing. Um. Somebody gets hot, it's it's on. I mean, oh, they're yeah. dying. They're yeah. legit dying. It is yeah, now man. an emergency. <laughs> and whether you think it's an emergency or not, Mrs. Johnny Homeowner expects you to think it's an emergency. That's right. So any other, right. any other myths you feel we need to bust in this episode, Dennis? I know we're getting... I don't know. I feel like we covered them. We're ranting. Oh, yeah. There might have to be well, a lot that's of editing. Pretty standard for a podcast. That's true. I know we're, uh, like you said, you know, we want you guys to be listening to us in between calls. So we're we're starting to run up against the hour mark. So, you know, get out there, go make a sale, and then go to your yep. next call and listen to another episode. Don't kill yourself. Drive safe. Take chances. <laughs> what? Is, what? No. What? You know, what does it? Travis say? Uh, drive fast. Take drive chances. fast. Take chances. Yeah, that's our. Yeah, we'll, we'll be bringing branch guys in here. Just not in the company vehicle, right? Right. Well, always. Sorry, business owners. We're not trying to. Unless there's a drive your cam. Guys are driving there's, like a, crazy. there's a drive cam. Yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> I mean, you can do it, but you, I mean. <laughs> you would know. You would know. Oh, yeah. Work for, work for the company with the drive cam. Oh, jeez. All right. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. I'm riding. I'm Dennis. And tune in next week for another episode of HVAC R&D. Which is what? Is that research and development? No, that's riding to Dennis. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah, that's right. See there? See what we did there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. See y'all.